Hi, I'm David Lawrence, founder and CEO of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're going to talk about shoe options and the proper fit to best interface with an orthotic or a prosthetic device. I want you to know from the beginning, we have no financial connection with any kind of shoe, orthotic, or prosthetic manufacturer. We're not going to talk about any brands here. We're more talking about types or the design of a shoe that you might need to best interface with whatever device you're using. I want you to note the information we're providing is experience-based. This is not didactic information that comes out of research studies. This is more the information we get from patients after years of working with orthotics and prosthetics and their interface with shoes. Now, orthotics and prosthetic devices are designed to be used with a shoe. They are designed to be used in tandem. That means an ill-fitting or a poor shoe choice on a good brace can make the brace ineffective or can cause rubs or damage to your foot. So the big question I get from a lot of people is, does the shoe matter, the type of shoe matter? Yes, it absolutely matters. But more importantly than just does a shoe matter, the question you should be asking is, how do I select the correct shoe uh, for the brace or the device that I'm using? And I like to say there's five components that are very important to consider in my opinion, when you look at the type of shoe I want to fit on this brace or this prosthetic device. First is consider both feet. Remember that most people have a problem on one side. They may have a prosthetic or an orthotic uh, on one side, but on the remaining or unaffected side, there is a completely different fit. So you have to consider a shoe that's gonna both support and stabilize that remaining foot as well as the foot that's inside a brace or in, that is utilizing a prosthetic device. So with that in mind, always consider what's the fit on both sides. Don't just fit for the prosthetic or orthotic. Fit more importantly, actually, for the remaining foot because it's the side that will most likely have a problem in the future uh, if you're going to run into an issue. Second thing is correct sizing. This is really important. I've sent people to a shoe store to get correct shoes, I, you know, shoe with a wider toe box, something that's going to fit your foot well. And well-meaning individual salesman says, let's make sure we don't rub on your foot anywhere. And so they come back, say they were a size nine shoe uh, in a normal width, and they come back with a 12 uh, double wide. Now, you might say, well, that's great, right? Because if I stand there, I don't feel any pressure in my shoe whatsoever. The issue, though, the two big problems, once you start walking, that foot slides around inside that shoe. Two things happen, shear and rub that can create blisters, but also banging that foot against the side of the shoe because that has momentum to move around. And then the second big issue is the idea of length. If you come back with a size 12 shoe and you're a size nine, maybe you needed a nine and a half to have enough room for the brace in there, you end up with a shoe that's quite a bit too long. And that's a trip hazard. And many of our folks may have a drop foot problem. You don't want to create a trip hazard by wearing a quote unquote clown shoe that's gonna that trip on the toe with that extra length. So sizing is very important that we get the right size for the patient and it fits the insert that goes in it. So if someone's having a custom insert made for their shoe, you wanna make sure you take that custom insert with you when you fit the shoes to make sure that they fit inside the shoe and there's space for the individual and for the foot to fit inside the shoe, I should say. The next issue is really looking at the the idea of the toe box or the size of the front of the shoe. And this is where a lot of people get into trouble. This toe box has both considerations of width and height. So if I'm looking at a toe box, let me just grab a shoe here. I wanna look at something that has both a substantial enough width for the person that may have a bunion, but also height for someone that may have a hammer toe. And those are two common issues. But also if I have an insert inside this shoe, there's enough room to fit my toes inside without rubbing on the top. That's the toe box. I wanna make sure that toe box has enough height to it. And what we call an extra depth shoe, all right? So if you're in the field looking at it, talking to an orthodist or pet orthodist, let me talk about an extra depth shoe. That's what they're meaning, a shoe that has more depth to it top to bottom. But if you get an extra wide shoe with a more square toe box, many times it will have enough depth to it. And that brings up the idea of stretching a shoe. For example, if you talk about someone that has a bunionectomy, that means a point in which their, their side of their foot is sticking out and that, that bunion is quite a high pressure point or a hammer toe, one toe on the top. And you get a shoe that's quite large to fit that area and the hammer toe, again, you get that problem of slipping around. 
So in that case, stretching the shoe is many times your best option. So in that case, you can utilize something like this, which is a simple little shoe stretcher. With a heat gun on leather materials, a shoe stretcher can come in and create a stretch or a loosen up a point on a shoe to really stretch out so the shoe still fits the person well, but that bunion or that hammer toe on the top of the shoe has space to move without being pressure or causing a rub. So simple st shoe stretcher for a normal size shoe can give me the height that I need on a particular point. Next issue then is top closure. So if I've got a shoe, how am I gonna get down into that shoe? I will tell you a lace up shoe is the way to go in most cases, something that will really open up. When you go into a shoe that is a shoe like this, looks great, right? Has plenty of space in it you might consider, but getting into this shoe is gonna take pointing your toes and trying to pushing down through. But when you're in an orthotic device, you're trying to get a prosthetic device in there, it's quite difficult to get past a shoe that doesn't lace up. So in general, open closure, top closure of the shoe using Velcro can be fantastic. Again, a wide shoe has a nice toe box, has a Velcro closure so you can really open up this top or the vamp of the shoe to get the device or get the prosthetic in there. Second of all, is looking at boots. A lot of people say, well, I really just can't wear boots, right? Well, no, if you can get something that opens up well enough on the top, you can fit an orthotic or a prosthetic device down into a boot like this. Second of all, a boot here, this type of boot. As long as you have a zipper all the way down the side and that opens up, again, you can get into a boot like this. There is even uh, prosthetic boots out there, um, cowboy boots that are made for prosthetics. Zipper all the way down the back with a low heel to toe drop off. And then you look at some of the specialized stuff that's out there. Here's a shoe in particular that has a lace up top, but it also has the ability to unzip and open the whole back of the shoe up. This way you can just slide the orthotic or prosthetic into the back of the shoe, zip up the shoe, pull across the top, and you're laced up and stable in into the shoe and getting into it. Another version here is a shoe that also has a zipper and goes the other direction you can unzip the entire front of the shoe, which is fantastic to be able to get that brace or prosthetic down in there and then stabilize it as you bring it back around. So again, top closure is very important to how do I get into my shoe? How do I have enough space to get into my shoe? And the last or fifth category is this bottom surface idea or heel height. And that means that you wanna consider what am I walking on? I'd like to have something that's built much more like a tennis shoe or a rubberized, vibrant, whatever sole you want that has an ability to grip, but also adapt to different surfaces. A hard leather slick surface is not what you want. Luckily, most shoes today, even dressier looking shoes, have a sole that is quite flat and has the ability to adapt to different surfaces and not be as, as slippery as say a leather based shoe. And that last issue we talked about it when you're looking at the sole of the shoe, is the heel height. Orthotics and prosthetics sit at a certain angle and they wanna be as vertical as possible when you're walking. I'm gonna show you this in a second when I put an orthotic into a shoe to show you how it's supposed to fit. But if this has a high heel base, the whole prosthetic or orthotic is gonna lean forward, gonna be very hard for you to stabilize and stay vertical. Feel like you're walking downhill all the time and want to buckle. If it's very flat, it's gonna lean backwards. Again, creating a hyperextension of your knee or harder to walk over the top. So a shoe like this that really has a kind of a standard, what about a 3 8 inch drop off from front to back, is gonna hold or stabilize your brace or prosthetic very well. Now you can go down the line, even a shoe like this, it's very flat as long as it opens up. You may have to add a slight amount of material or wedge material and heel to make it vertical so that when you go from a flat shoe to a shoe that has a little bit more of a heel in it, you have the capability to wear both and you can adjust from one shoe to the next. Now, the question many times I get is, these kind of shoes aren't attractive, right? That it's not the best looking shoes, but I can tell you some of the things I showed you much better looking than what was out there a couple of years ago. So they can be a wider, more stabilized shoe, but they don't have to be grossly unattractive to wear. And especially on the women's side as well. I have to tell you, this is a hard no. Sorry, this is a heavy shoe that's just not gonna work. An orthotic device is simply not gonna stabilize and not be able to fit into a, a shoe like this and get the prosthetic foot even to fit. Now on a prosthetic, 
on a very high-end uh, prosthetic with a lot of adjustments, you can possibly get into a high-heeled shoe if, with an adjustable ankle unit. But orthotically, that's a fixed angle, not going to work. However, there's lots of shoes out there that, again, have a very stabilized base, rubberized sole, which is great, and it's going to give you the right pitch for your orthotic device with a lace-up to easier to get in and out of it. You could also go more of a sporting line, so there is more of a tennis shoe idea. All right, different shoe manufacturers create, and this is something you want to Google, you can basically look up this idea of what's my widest toe-based or toe-boxed running shoe or cross trainer or tennis shoe. But you want width in here and a shoe that has enough width for it. The nice thing about these types of shoes is they are flexible in the front, so if there's a need for some extra room, many times they'll stretch where leather does not stretch as well. Again, get in dressier shoes, same thing, has a lace-up capability so it can open up, but a very flat base so that you really stabilize the brace or the orthotic in place. Now, on the other end here, one of the things people like is, that, again, a shoe like this, orthotically and prosthetically, the problem is there's not enough of the top of the shoe to keep your heel from lifting up. So it's something you can try, and every once in a while they will hold, but if not, as you go to take a step, you're going to tend to pull the orthotic or the prosthetic up out of the shoe, and that's not going to be a stable stepping position for you. And lastly, here, again, the, the sole is fine. The heel to toe is probably okay, but if you look at the toe box, you're looking at a narrow, trimmed toe box where there's just not enough room, probably, for that person to get their foot in there comfortably. And people say, well, gosh, I had a shoes like this. I bought them when I was 50. I'm 70 now. My foot hasn't changed. It has changed. As we age, in particular, the decades of the 60s and 70s, the long arch of the foot and the arch across the foot, what we call the metatarsal arch, both start to drop slightly. That's going to create a slightly wider and slightly longer foot as you age. So the shoes you bought when you were 50 likely do not fit your foot well when you're 70. And they should be reassessed to check what is your foot length now versus what it was. And if you have something like a bunion or hammer toes, those are things in particular, a tighter toe box is going to be difficult to fit in. Now, with that being said, let's talk about, I'm going to roll something in here to talk about getting a correct fit to your shoe. And what does that mean? That means how do I know when I go to the shoe store whether the orthotic I have is going to fit well with, with the individual, with the shoe that I'm purchasing? So if I grab a shoe like this and I say, okay, I'll put that orthotic in there, and how do I know if it's right? One, does it fill the shoe front to back and not slip around a lot of extra play? Second of all, once I put it in place and it sits in the back of the shoe, is the brace vertical? All right, it's a very simple to think thing to see. If I see and this brace is sitting like that, that brace is not vertical. The heel height is too high on the shoe. However, if I'm sitting here and it's too far back and say, okay, this leans way back, it's very flat, then there are things like heel wedges, all right, that can be used in all different sizes to fill up the space in a flat shoe so that when you go with a shoe that has a little bit more heel in it, for example, like the tennis shoe that has a little more heel than toe, it will fit perfectly in one, and you can lift up the other. So a low-heeled shoe, you can do a lot with wedges. A high-heeled shoe simply isn't going to work. Now, if I take that and say, this, how does that work with prosthetics? Does that change my thinking? And the answer is no. It really works about the same way. Let's just take one of these shoes, flush, take a prosthetic foot, slide it into place, OK? And we're going to say, OK, does that look about right? What am I looking for? Is the pylon vertical? So when I look at a shoe and I put it up on a stand and it looks like that pylon's just, just about vertical, I'm fine. If it's leaning back, again, I might need wedging. If it's leaning way forward, that's a shoe I can't wear. So what are our suggestions for you? Well, when you're looking at shoes, one of the things I suggest is really taking all the shoes in your closet and pull them out and start assessing this. Is the device or the prosthetic fit vertical in the shoe? Second of all, if I'm not sure, take like your three or four favorite shoes and take them to your physical therapist or the orthodist, pet orthodist you're working with, and let them help you make a good decision as to is this fitting right or is this not fitting right? And then beyond that is this idea of purchasing new shoes. Again, 
Make sure you take your orthotic inserts with you. Take your prosthetic, your orthotic, to the shoe store to do the fitting there. But then, at the same point, take it back to your orthodist or physical therapist. Walk around some in therapy to be sure it's correct before you may decide to take those shoes back and not end up with shoes that you can't wear. And then the idea, last idea, I guess I would say, is make sure you inspect your feet every day. Every time you come out of the orthotic device, you come out of your shoe orthotic tandem setup or prosthetic shoe tandem setup, make sure you're inspecting your, your foot, making sure that there's no rub spots, no irritation areas, and that your foot is in good shape. Remember that the best combination of the right shoe with the right device is really the winning combination that's gonna help you walk. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.